welcome to the Writing Community Chat Show. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's Friday Night Chat Show. Uh, we are very excited to be here and we hope you're well. We are very, very happy and it's Friday, which is always fantastic. Um, Chris Hooley's by my side and this is the third show this week that from the community that Ooh. we're giving you, which is just unbelievable. And the guest list keeps getting better and better. Um, Chris, how are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you. How are you? Uh, great. And I love seeing on the chat. Everyone's there already. Um, do you know what it's been it's been a very busy week and i'm glad to make it a friday even though it's been a nice productive week it's been a busy one mm. so to have a have a drink tonight with our guest that it's going to be a, a very nice interview i think and um the chat has been great on wednesday we had anna Moose get on the chat and the chat went kind of crazy on, on the show and the chat ca uh, went kind of crazy and um you know in our fun little family group on twitter we mm. posted a a thing this afternoon and they've loved that and it's just great to see that the community from this podcast has become an absolutely mad family and i love it so <laughs> i'm just inspired by their craziness to be honest yeah i mean i'm slightly concerned about the amount of easter eggs out at the minute because having a little drink now i'm thinking it's not we can't go out and get a kebab that's not how it works but i can go out and get a load of easter <laughs> eggs so i'm worried about doing that because they're so cheap they're so tempting uh, and there's just loads of them knocking about at the minute. So. How How is but your we're... training and diet going for our calendar that clearly might not happen? Uh... Yeah, it's not so much the calendar. It's Harrogate. Like, we're planning to go there, go there live. We've got the GoPros now. We've got the T-shirts. And I don't want to go there like Easter egg man. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go there and have him lost some weight, but I don't well, know if it's going to happen. Really. Well, for me, the Six Nations, which right, but it's kicked off right now. It's the mm. Wales' fate is in uh, Scotland's hands right now, uh, and obviously, I'd much rather be doing the show. But yeah, I blame them at the moment. The last six, seven weeks, my my weight has not moved because I've been drinking on the weekends, and um, mm. you know, what can you do? I don't know. Well, it's got to that point. We ever embrace it, and you be fat rugby man, and I be fat chocolate man. <laughs> <laughs> or, or we yeah, do I like chocolate about as well, it. Chris. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so we got some great guests lined up as far as we can see. I mean, we were previously doing seasons and we kind of just gone, do you know what? Just scrap it. I mean, we're just going to go. Um, and we have some unbelievable guests to announce over the next few weeks, few months. Um, and we can't mm. wait to tell you. Um, Hon the Wales, says Connor. Hon, Hon indeed. Um, <laughs> let me know. Keep me updated on the score, please. And also... Um, I want to know today, we're going to do something different with the chat because you guys are so, you know, full of energy. I want to know, writing writing winners and writing sinners, mm. let us know this week how your writing's going. Have you been a writing winner? And if you have, let us know your success stories. Or are you a writing sinner like me um, who, who has excuses? So let us know your excuses or let us know your winning <laughs> stories and we will pop them up at some point through the show. Um, so... Let's do the book uh, sponsor and then we can get the guest on because I'm excited. Chris, are you ready? We definitely need a beer token book promotion for today's show because we do. there's some beer flowing. <laughs> there is. Um, I've put that up there. Please support the authors. Right. Okay. So our book sponsor today is a guest we recently had on the show, which is fantastic. Mm. And that person is Liv Matthews, LV Matthews. If you cross the bottom of your screen now, you will see the prank, which I bought and is getting sent out to Anna who... Um, Anya, who won a competition on Twitter this week, it's had 4.7 out of 5 ratings, uh, uh, stars out of 36. Oh my goodness. It's had 4.7 <laughs> out of 5 stars, right? After, after 36 ratings, it's available on Kindle, audiobook, and paperback. It's pacey, absorbing, and brilliantly topical, clever, and compelling, smart, sly, sophisticated suspense. Um, and there's some great reviews she's had. And the bio says What happens when reality TV goes wrong? Elle Green is about to find out. Elle lives a quiet life in London until a chance encounter leads her to discover the link between a hit reality TV show and her father's death. Elle realises she can over uh, orchestrate sorry, uh, the perfect revenge, but her pursuit soon turns to obsession and she doesn't seem to know how to stop. Her drive for uh, destruction means risking her life and the lives of those close to her. Mm, sounds fantastic. So... Let me pop that up on the top there. And 
the book cover that is if i find it there it is chris for your satisfaction oh, nice. yes indeed that is a beautiful book cover it is um and it, it's, it sounded a fantastic book and if you haven't listened to that show please go back and check it out because it was um it was actually very 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 good mm. um even cool. if we do say so ourselves <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh there's a lot of chat going on so i will be distracted so let's get our guest on and then we can we can um talk more in depth about i don't know uh so <laughs> tonight's guest okay uh, the author of the ben bracken thrillers uh which is a fantastic series uh crooks hollow and the audible bestseller far from the tree he's a fellow podcaster and his fifth mm. book um in the ben bracken series called the watchman is out on june the 24th ladies and gentlemen please welcome rob parker <laughs> good evening hello to hello. you <laughs> hi thank you so much for having me uh, it is an absolute pleasure, and we've been very excited for this after your um, your advertising video the, the Saturday week. Um, and we love the fact because I saw the ranking video and I thought there might be beer involved. So cheers, guys! <laughs> there certainly is. Um, cheers. Thank you, and you. happy Happy Friday to you all. Happy, yeah, Happy Friday to everyone and everyone out there. Thanks for. Oh, I'm just I'm so stoked to be here. I'm dead happy. Do you know what? It's um it is like one of those things we take for granted that when the world was kind of normal, you get to the weekend and it's just even going out or just seeing your friends was kind of a normal kind of thing that you kind of didn't really appreciate as much. And now it's like the opportunity to drink beer with someone. It's like, whoa. Honestly, I will never take it for granted ever again. You know, anything. I'll never take anything for granted ever again. Um and you know, I was always sort of like in the um in the headspace where I was a glass half full guy to begin with, but now I'm glad the glass is like three quarters full, full time now, you know, <laughs> when we get out of this, I mean, really. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. definitely. So how, how is uh, Rob, how has your life been at the moment? Is everything good? Yeah, everything's great. Thank you very much. I mean, um, I'm, uh, I've got three young children who are three, five and 10. And um, so I'm busy, busy times at home. Mrs. Parker is an absolute saint. Uh, she's a goddess. I, don't, I couldn't do anything without her. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I'm i just dead, dead happy. Dead, dead happy. Um, I write um, full-time um, and have done for five years now. And um, it's definitely one of them things where um, it's the hustle for me at the moment. We were just talking about it before I came on. It's like... Mm. So I've got I've got five books out I think this year. Um, in fact, I shouldn't say that because some of them haven't been announced yet. <laughs> you know? You've got three, three I've maybe, three, and then three a couple more. This year, yeah. What is this? Is this half a beer? And he's already throwing it away. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm um, yeah I'm just really delighted to get up every day and make stuff up. And I'm a witness <laughs> to my wife, and I can't believe that I'm allowed well, to do this. To be honest. W- well, let's let's dig into a bit about, I guess, the Ben Bracken series, because for people who don't know what that is about, um, let's set the grounds for that. And then that will make a bit more sense when we talk about the new book that's upcoming later on. Yeah, sure. Um, the Ben Bracken series was um, I wrote it in 2000. And, I started writing it in 2012. Um, so 2012, I was playing football um, I'd always wanted to be a writer, but I'd never had an outlook for it. I didn't know it was something that um, people sort of from my age and where I lived, it was something that we were allowed to be or do, you know, like and the only people that came in careers wise into our school back then was, um, it was literally, it was a bird watcher. So I thought I was groomed <laughs> for a career in ornithology, uh, but, you know, so, uh, but I always wanted to tell stories and um, yeah, I, I got injured playing football and I needed six knee surgeries, three on what? one leg, three on the other. And I was out of work for 18 months. Um, and it was like, what do I do with my life and my time now? And I've got no, you know, I've never got any shame in telling people that, like, my head was just like that, like spiraling yeah, down, yeah. sitting on a sofa. And it was back when Jeremy Kyle was still on the telly and it was just horrendous, <laughs> just horrendous. So, um, and uh, it was writing that started pulling me out. You know, I started thinking this could be the one time I've got, because I wasn't allowed to do anything else. Mm. Why not use this time to write and try and um finagle a silver lining out of the situation I was in. So I did. Um, so I wrote the first book in six weeks. And um, in 2013, I started, uh, I self-published it straight away. Like, mm. boom, there we go. And I wrote about a soldier um, because um, I'd, I'd gone to a, like a small village school and three people from that village school went off to Iraq, then Afghanistan. And they came back in three different ways. Yeah. Um, you know, one was um, dead solid, he was born to do it. Another one was 
um, he'd come back and the bloodlust was too much and he just all he could talk about was killing. Mm. And the third one was traumatized. Couldn't go through dinner without thinking about choppers getting him out of there. And it, it really blew me away that. And all three of them had then been told, thanks very much. Cheers mm. for that. Go get a normal job. And I just, mm. it blew me mind that, you know, all that sacrifice mm. that they're still paying now mm. for us, you know. Um, so I just, it's that one, one thing like, right, thanks for that. You go and do a normal thing now. That mm. made me want to write about an ex-soldier, certainly. Um, and certainly the sense of duty. What if, what, how would you feel if your sense of duty hadn't been extinguished? And if you wanted to keep going on, if your duty just hadn't been fulfilled. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, so I wrote about um, Ben Bracken coming home, causing trouble uh, with a sense of duty. He doesn't know where to put and uh, he ends up in all sorts of scrapes. And I've had a load of fun with that. Um, the first book, that, that first manuscript then in 2012-13 um, eventually hit shelves in 2017 um, because then it was the hunt for agents and you know trying to get a deal and all that kind of stuff and um it was just a relentless period of rejection until you know like it is for us all isn't it i mean rejection is definitely part of the writing gig um so but it yeah in, in my case it took four years of to get there really so yeah it was there uh, it was ace <laughs> no, I don't look back at it with any regrets because it made me dead hard to there's, reject there's a, f- there's a few comments mm. about how quick that six week six week period oh, of writing yeah. is that, I mean, that, yeah was it's that atypical, like that. was that like say compared to your first book uh ben bracken to now is how much has that changed um when i'm writing the first draft i'm definitely two thousand words a day um mm. every day rain or shine till we get that first draft done okay. and it can be you know it, it can be such a slog especially that as we know the twenty thousand mark to sixty thousand can be just like wading through treacle can't it Mm. um but then you know you live for the moments when it flows um but two thousand words every day um ten thousand words a week with a five-day working week um you've got an eighty thousand word manuscript in two months so that's the way i see it and that's the way i pace out (laughs) 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 yeah that doesn't give much you know that doesn't talk about the edit process because of course with the Mm. first ben bracken book um i remember it was draft 46 that got the approval wow. so 46 rewrites oh, on a book i would, but, I I mean, would it literally just, I give it up. It. yeah i wouldn't change it because it got me better it made me better mm-hmm. you know sometimes with that i would send it back uh, with ten thousand words changed sometimes i'd add like i remember once i sent one back and i'd added thirty thousand words and it was just it was like a hundred and ten thousand words of just oh it was awful it was just the <laughs> slowest thing you could imagine um and then mm. once I, I sent it back and I didn't change anything, just see if yeah. they'd notice, and they always did. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best thing I think I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> this is unacceptable. Let's just send it back. Yeah, and maybe yeah. they'll no, change I've their mind. Changed, I mean... I've, I've made your changes, and here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rob, obviously, Chris mentioned that you've got a, a new Ben Bracken book coming out later mm. in the year, but you actually had a book come out this week that we haven't even mentioned yet. <laughs> Did, which yeah, you probably well, should mention. It's because... so mad. I've got, I've got like, here's one I prepared earlier. So Blackstone Ooh, came out go. on um, Tuesday. Yeah, the 23rd. Yep. Um, and I had an absolute blast with this because I think I'm more, my career has been more in the crime genre, for sure. Mm. Um, and this, I started off, because I like writing mystery. Everything starts with a mystery to me. Mm. And then it just got really, really minging. <laughs> and I couldn't stop it from being minging. And um mm. You know, when you you follow a story where it wants to go mm. and it just kept getting darker and darker and I couldn't stop it from doing it and I just had to go with it in the end. And it became mm. a horror novel. Um, mm. And I got halfway through and it was in the middle, of, uh, yeah, towards the end of last year. And I was thinking, like, there's only one place I really want to take this because I really like what they do at Red Dog Press. I really like, um, I do the, um, yeah, we mentioned the other podcast. Uh, I do the Blood Brothers podcast with Chris McDonald mm. and Sean Coleman. Sean Coleman is Mr. Red Dog, and um, I <laughs> wanted to find a way to work with him. And I had this half a book there, and I sent it to him and said, would you like this? And he was the only person who saw this manuscript at all. Um, and I said, it's going to get worse. <laughs> <laughs> if I follow it. And he said, yeah. So, it, and we decided, right, if we can get it, this was in October. So if we can get it ready for March, shall we do it? And we like, yes, let's do it. So I had to finish it before uh, middle of December. And um, 
I just had so much fun. You know, like mm. writing without any kind of control or um, and the gloves were so far off on this. And if something was going horrible, I just leaned into it. And mm. I had so much fun. It was, you know, like all those um, movies that um, I loved growing up. You know, like that we, we all did, I guess. Like, you, you know... Um, Ah, oh, like the ET, the suburbia of ET. You know, don't, don't mention ET. Don't, don't, don't like mention ET, ET around Chris. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like ET either. Oh, it's it's not that I don't like ET, but um, I've got a backstory of ET that traumatized me. He was me, he was then... traumatized by his family yeah. over ET. And <laughs> no way! It, this is brilliantly yeah. and terrible at the same time. It's just <laughs> it's a great story. Let's no, talk about the one thing that I don't like. But no, yes, yeah. I, I, honestly, I, I I hate him. I hate ET. I hate him. It, like seriously, yeah. right the way through my life, he terrified me. Mm. So uh, you know, to the point that, <sighs> wow. um, like growing up, like um, I had to be shielded from the sci-fi magazine covers in news agents because it would mm. remind me of ET. No way. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm literally feel like I'm in a meeting right now with two people <laughs> that hate ET. I mean, <laughs> survivors. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what else though? Survived, Chris. That that survived little kid it. lured no, ET into his bedroom with sweets. I'm just saying it's weird, and I don't he like did. it. Honestly, I know, I know. I'm not, I'm not down with anything that ET stands for. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, but it is like that atmosphere of suburbia. I just loved yeah. it, and that representation of suburbia was amazing. Um, yeah. And I like people that you can relate to being thrown into settings that mm. go south very quickly. Mm. Um, and that's always been attractive to me um, in a storytelling sense, I, I, and in a in an entertainment sense. What I like to watch and what I like to read and stuff. It's always yeah. that kind of stuff. So, Rob, with that Black, Blackstoke setting, obviously, you've talked about the suburbia and you've got loads of different characters. I felt like when I was reading it, the first half of the novel is just sort of setting the whole story up, really, because there's so much going on and so many characters involved. So how did you go about, like, actually writing that? Like, did the characters come, like, what, you know, you said you do 2,000 words a day, so did mm. they just pop up or did you always have a plan in mind for those characters? Um, I, I, I had... A plan in, in, my, in mind for a couple of the characters, mm. more about what would happen to them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, no, uh, to be honest, I, I'm not a planner. Um, mm. So um, I had a cast that I wanted to go with um, because there were certain things that I wanted to challenge myself with. Mm. Um, and I just sort of stuck to it, really. And I like to rotate the perspective. You know, so I'll bounce between the perspectives, and it's great because with the Ben Bracken stuff, that's all first person present, and this is mm. this was all third person past from different headspaces, mm. and and I really enjoyed that. It, it felt like really exciting and free to me, and I've done that with the Audible series as well, um, because I like how stories can change slightly from when you are from a slightly different viewpoint. But if you're the reader and you get to see all those viewpoints, I think it gives a, a uniquely more fulfilling experience of that mm. story because you're seeing things that other characters can't see or experience. I hope <laughs> I explained that right. I think I might have made a real hotspot of that. But... No, you definitely did. And one of, Sorry, Chris. One of my questions was going to be, um, obviously, Paul's character is really struggling with his marriage. And obviously, you mentioned at the beginning there with... Um, Mrs. Uh, Parker, are you having a great marriage? So did did you use that novel as an outlet to sort of like, if this wasn't so great, <laughs> no, this no, is no. what it would look like? <laughs> definitely not. But um, I think certainly, I mean, I'm definitely not someone who writes about things that happens in my own life because mm. um, I think life's got enough variety in it without me then deciding to put it in a fiction work and complicate matters. So mm. I never write about people that I know. I definitely write about, things I've seen and experienced definitely mm. and feelings and putting certain things in certain situations. And mm. I quite like putting my, imagining something and then imagine if the worst thing were to happen in that scenario and then mm. just turning the volume, switching the dial gradually hotter and hotter and hotter until there's combustion, you know? I, and do you know what? I, I think that's one of the biggest sort of advice a lot of great authors give is that the what if question, you know, and people want advice, new writers for advice is Ask the what if question, you know, even for everyday sort of routine, what if, and just work off yeah. that. Yeah, I think most attention in that book is from a what if perspective. Uh, mm -hmm. It really is um, until you get to, and that's just for like, like normal what ifs. There's obviously yeah. the, the greater what ifs later on in the book, uh, you know. Uh, what if something truly terrible could be going on? <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> uh, and not just a bit of domestic strife. 
Um, but I think I think it's important that you know, like in in relationships and in life, um, there's always two sides, isn't there? Um, and I really enjoyed that, you know. So for every time that um, one character says, you know, is unhappy about one thing or gives one perspective, the other character will give uh, a different perspective that will flesh that out. And yeah, again, I think it adds to the reader experience. I hope it adds to the reader experience. You kind of touched on the fact that you were not a planner, and that was going to be oh. one of my questions. Uh, you know, how much of not a planner are you? Are you full on? like myself, just writes and follows the character or do you have some sort of structure at all? It depends what I'm writing. Um, but so for Blackstoke, it was definitely no planning, just go for it. Um, for the Ben Bracken stuff, yeah, it's no planning really. I've got an idea for a couple of scenes, possibly, mm, yeah. you, and, and places that I want to go to because I like, I like locations. You know, locations are ace. Um, in the, um, they can totally refresh a story when you change mm. the location to somewhere different. And I like it when the location becomes a character in, its, in itself. Um, in Blackstoke's case, I kept um, all of the action in that um, estate and cul-de-sac mm. um, because I love that hometown, you know, not hometown. Um, when you, it's like, it's like stuff like, even, you could even say of Under Siege, the Steven Seagal movie, <laughs> that it, all the action takes place on that boat. Yeah. And because everything has a confined boundaries and very set boundaries, it means that everyone has to have friction and it boils mm. down the, the drama. It means there has to be drama because these characters mm. are constantly up against each other. Um, and it boils down that dra drama to an essence and you can just let it play out from there. Mm. So play, place is mega to me in, in the books. I, and I really always hope that, because the books that I read that I love, place is mega in them to me you know if, if i can get mm. the sense of place you're yeah. halfway there with me and i'm i'm there and i'm with you mm. well that wasn't even the question was it it was am i a planner <laughs> <or> a <dance? laughs> hey no i agree i agree i kind of write similarly and i really enjoy location but how mm. how in, how do you manage to do this without because people get very picky where, and how descriptive a place is how do you manage that when trying to describe a scene and not dragging away from the story too much of that um, it goes back to, um, and I'm not saying I'd, I, I do it right. I'd, I'd add that caveat that I don't, I don't know it because none of us know whether we get it right. You know, we, it's, mm. it's like cooking, isn't it? Writing. And you've got, say it's an 80,000 word novel. I see it as like 80,000 different seasonings and you can take <laughs> out three and the whole, this will, this will change, you know? So mm. I, I'm definitely a work in progress and I'm just sticking to what I like and know, you know, like, so um, interesting comment in the corner. Enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I, I think it's. What was the question again? That totally threw. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I forgot. Yeah. I have no idea. Uh, what did we say? Um, oh, setting so, scenes and taking yeah, away from the story. Yeah, yeah. Being in the yeah. <laughs> well, what happened was um, I, I always found creative writing to be something I really enjoyed. So when I went, yeah, it did escalate quickly. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's Mario's fault. We always blame Mario for that. It's always inappropriate. Um, I Yeah, um, it was at school. I really enjoyed creative writing and I was... Um, Every chance I got, I would do creative writing to try uh, and gave it to my English teacher. And my English teacher at 16 took one of the passages that I wrote and eviscerated me on description. Oof. He said, you just went way too far. Um, oh. And it was it was like one of the, the strongest talking to's I've ever had from a teacher. <laughs> you know? But it was about this. It was a dressing down for just how far mm. I'd gone. And I look back at it and I think it was absolutely formative to me because it made me tone mm. everything back. The other thing it did it was it made me write screenplays for about mm. 15, 20 years. So from the age mm. of six, no, not 15 years, 16 to 27, I wrote screenplays. Mm. Um, and they were awful. I mean, mm. you will never see any of them <laughs> made ever, you know. Um, one of them featured Jean Claude Van Damme fighting raptors, and it was called Amazing. Jurassic Park 3. So, you know, <laughs> I, think, I think we'd all watch that. I think. Yeah, there's still I, I, time. I certainly there's would still watch time, that. definitely. <laughs> Is um, there? I mean, he's getting quite old now. I would still go and see it, Chris. So let, yeah, <laughs> let's definitely. make it clear. <laughs> yeah. so, it, yeah. so it made, but you know, like in prose, you can go on forever about description because mm. there's no real limit. Um, but whereas in screenplays, you've got, it's a, a, a minute per page, isn't it? You know, yeah. like you, you brevity is your currency. So you've got to yeah. make everything short. And it was great teaching for me, actually. It mm. taught me to be brief with description, taught me to be um, to the point, I think. Hmm. So, Rob, if we're talking about things that you are taught at school, is it one thing that you're supposed to never do in books? 
and I'm not going to spoil it, but I'm going to talk to you about there's one scene in Blackstoke where there's somebody looking at their pet. And when I read that moment, I was like, is Rob going to do this? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I suppose the question is, um, what's the question without giving away this book? Um well, I mean, it's not—it's not crucial, but yeah, I it's mean, not I, crucial. But I think you, you know, need to explain, some would be explain something right now, uh, <laughs> because the way you're saying it sounds could be a lot worse than it probably is. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's not. I mean, obviously, there's no um, there's no wanton sort of. Um, yeah, they always say. Um, I talked to uh, talked to Mike Craven about this a few times. M W Craven, and he says, um, "Never harm the dog. Just don't harm the dog," <laughs> because he gets messages from people all the time saying, "If you harm that dog, you're going to lose me as a reader." Um, and I talked to another author and um, I don't know, you know, I won't mention um, this author's name because I haven't cleared it with her. But, you know, <laughs> already gave away the gender. Oh, God, what an idiot. Um, but um, he, yeah, she said that um, it was the morning of her debut coming out and uh, it hit Amazon. And as soon as it hit Amazon, it got a one star review. And it was because someone on NetGalley had read it ages and ages ago and mm -hmm. seen that something happened to uh, domestic pet in it mm. and had saved up a one star review for publication day <laughs> and just hit her with it and it was the first thing she read about her book on the day it came out and i just thought like for a start my honest thought is thinking is um in the fiction that we're reading and writing dark <laughs> things happen and yeah. if you're upset about an animal getting hurt where you're we you know when there's far worse things happen to the humans <laughs> there's an imbalance somewhere yeah. that said i never do anything for um like what's mm. the expression again like um for the sake of it mm. it's just you know there, there we go torment the humans just keep the animals safe <laughs> i will say i think i, I deliberately counteracted the, this though chris in the book because mm. there is another animal that has a very very strong line in the book Mm. And that is there to sort of negate what happens mm. to the those other animals. But for example, like I Am Legend, right? The film. Uh, yeah. There's a very clear scene where the dog is uncomfortably, uncomfortably let go, if you will. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a crucial part of the story. I think I think if things serve the story, that's what mm. they're there for. That, so and, don't and, aimlessly hit the dog then. No, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't no, just walk no. up to it and kick it with no context. No, um, no, no. I, but it would never, it never crossed my mind to do that because it, just the same way it wouldn't cross my mind to kill characters for no reason whatsoever. You know, everything, every decision is made in these books, and I'm sure other authors. And 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 truthfully, behind closed doors, authors, we all talk about this thing, don't we? About mm -hmm. the don't hurt the animals kind of thing. <laughs> well, well, I don't. You know, no one wants to hurt the animals at times, but. Mm -hmm a lot of there is there is darkness in these books there is you know <laughs> and sometimes you just have to go with it but um rob if we if we went with the, the line of sometimes authors talk some authors have talked about blackstoke in a really positive light um i can't remember the author who said it you're going to correct me because i'm <laughs> i can't remember but they did say it was like stephen king like in his prime sort of thing um i can't remember who said that so you can tell yeah, us who said that was... but yeah it was last weekend I got a message from Lauren North and um, mm. from the In Suspense podcast as well. And I I couldn't believe it. You know, because like it's a it's a publisher's and author's dream when they name mm. check one of the absolute, you know, dons of the game. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I just couldn't believe it when um, when she said that. And I sent it to, you know, my publisher and they were absolutely delighted. Yeah, Stephen mm. King Acid was the... Uh, Ooh, that's, well, wow, that's a comparison. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which wow. is what I'm worried about living up to. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is... Um, Stephen, that... Stephen King's quite out there himself. You I know, know yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really need to read your book. And there was another Ooh, author hi, making oh. these... Oh, go on. Can I, I want to interrupt here. Sorry, guys. Go on. Um, there's a comment come in that I need to read. Um, Ross Young. Hooli wrote one of the few, one of the few scenes I have ever had to close the book to <laughs> and oh. take a breath before carry on. Horrific. He's a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Any comments on that, Chris? Um, I know what scene he's referring to because he actually messaged me and said <laughs> You're the exact same thing. <laughs> he just put there. He was like, "Why? Why?" Well, um, so yeah. Um, Did you kick we, a dog? We write horrific scenes. No, there was no dog involved <laughs> no. in that okay. scene. <laughs> good, good, good drills, good drills. But you, um, do you know what? Like with that, with that, 
that thing, you know, like because I haven't made a um, a, a fanfare about anything that happens in the book itself. Because mm. I think that so much the journey in a book is is um, it, it's what it's there for, isn't it? And, yeah, and I don't like to be told with books that this is the greatest twist you you will never see coming. That kind of thing. Because <laughs> all I'm doing is sitting there waiting mm. for it to happen. So I don't yeah. want to, you know, or the, the last page had the will change everything. Oh, I don't. What's the point in reading it? You know, if yeah. I'm being told that. Um, but what I didn't realize is that people actually really like to be horrified. Mm. I didn't know this before before this came out this week. But I'm, I've been really lucky in getting messages from people saying, you're a sick man, but I absolutely loved it. You know, <laughs> like, that's great. You know, that's absolutely great. You know, um, so, yeah, it's cool. And I think there's a lot of quiet horror fans because I think horror is mm. it's like it's a gateway for a lot of people, I think, into reading. It certainly was for myself. So, mm. yeah, it's been yeah. really interesting. This And a lot of people who you wouldn't expect. You know, so there's, I know that um, Ben Bracken has a little bit of um, the publishers. Of, of, well, yeah, but like they've tried yeah. to ramp it up, the heartthrob quality of him a little bit, you mm. know, make him a little bit of a... Um, you know, like a, a iconic, uh, you know, a, a sexy icon. Well, I'm, I'm butchering this phrase. I don't know what. I'm going <laughs> but, you know, a um, sex symbol. Please, that's a sex it. Symbol. Thank you, sexy icon. <laughs> 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 um, and um, but those, you know, those wonderful readers who have been reading that mm. have, have read this, and uniformly the, the responses have been really good. So mm -hmm. there's an appetite that people didn't know they had for this kind of thing, I think. I don't know. Yeah. Certainly opened my eyes, definitely. And there was another author that compared it. I mean, I'm terrible. I should have prepped more for the show. But there was another author that said that it was very much like a Stranger Things vibe with that suburban sort of area. Yeah. Um, so how, how did that feel? Obviously, that's a massive show and it's got a mm. huge fan base. Um, so if anyone's interested in Stranger Things, now they might come to your book as, as yeah, a result. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? I feel great. Um, any time mm. that it's um, not it, – when, when any time that someone compares it to something good mm. um, is a good thing. Uh, any time mm. where someone says it's bad, um, I'm less <laughs> confused about it. So uh, anything uh, – to be honest, you know um, what? I'm, so, I don't mind any feedback at all. I'd rather have honest feedback is what I'd rather have. So, um, so someone said uh, that my book was like The Walking Dead, and I was like, what? Wait, wait, which season? Uh, because that's because <laughs> that could be a compliment in both ways, you know what I mean? Yeah, or, or, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, honestly, as long as people are reading and enjoying and talking about it, that's fine. Um, mm. I think I'd rather be told though, you know, and I really like it when people get in touch and say, you know, I love this aspect, but this worked less well for me because it's only going to make me better. I just want to get better. Yeah, I don't want, you know, I'd much rather have. Um, 10 three-star reviews that um, told me where I went wrong than 100 five-stars that just blew smoke. I'd rather know where I didn't go right. You mentioned, mm. Rob, about your, your ET vibe and how you loved sort of the environment as opposed to the story, right? And mm. and then I think Stranger Things kind of leaks well into that. Is that kind mm. of where that comes from? There is, you know, the whole sort of vibe yeah. of Yeah, I think um, I love being outdoors, always mm. been like that. Mm. Um, I love the solitude you can find outdoors, but I love the creepiness you can find in those mm. settings as well. Like, <laughs> woods are amazing, aren't they? Like, mm, yes. being alone in the woods is just one of the coolest things you can possibly do. I know <laughs> it might not be the coolest thing I've ever said, but... Um, <laughs> it, it, know, I, agree. I, cool. I really agree. Yeah, really agree. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Out of context, I want to I wanna quote this. Mm. This says, uh, I like myself a smoky ass, though, uh, from Halo. Uh, are mm. we talking about, like, um, like rump steak? Like I a have smoke, no idea. A smoked uh, Tabasco rump thing. It's interesting. It's it's an interesting thought. I don't know. It is. Uh, it is. But I'll agree. I'll agree with you, Halo. Yeah. Yes, we all like smoky asses. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we've got a few staple questions on this show, and um, Chris loves to take this away with the first one and decide which one he fancies doing on the night, so I'll pick up the next one. <laughs> but Chris, uh, do you want to start this off? Yeah, um, so... One of the staple questions is, if you could change the ending to any novel that you've read, which novel would that be and why? Oh. Yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> oh, and on the spot as well. That, yeah. is, that is absolutely brutal. And it's live on YouTube. Yeah. So, <laughs> <no problem. laughs> We could we could perhaps send these out in advance. I don't know. No, no, I, no. Uh, let's stick with it because right, I'm frantically looking around in in this room for a novel. <laughs> John, oh. my memory. Well, um. um we can, I, I got, got gutted at the end of um, Golding's The Spire. I love mm. that book. Um, and um, it, it was something I read in my uh, A-level 
uh, studies, and I still read it now. Um, mm. No, actually, change all that. Change all that. The it's Dubliners. Gone. You know, uh, James Joyce's The Dubliners. Yeah. Um, set of short stories, brilliantly, but the last story mm. went on for ages and was really unfulfilling. We could just get rid of that. <laughs> just get rid just of cut it. Cut that out. Don't even change yeah. it. Just cancel. Don't, don't yeah. just, get, just snip it. It's fine. Yeah. Then you've got the perfect set. Because mm. the rest of the stories in that book are unbelievable. Okay, okay. That's a good answer. I like that. That is good. Um, all right, so the next part next part of the question would be, and we'll open this up to film and TV as well, because I know you've got like Jaws in the background on the pictures there. <laughs> you, you, you like a bit of film. Um, if you could take a character from anything, you know, literature, TV, film, and put that into a story of your own, or, or make a story up for that character, what character would you take? <sighs> These are the best questions. <laughs> If, if you're listening on the podcast, he's looking around frantically his room with his eyes trying to uh, <laughs> yeah, in, inspiration to on something. Well, like, my first first thing I've landed on is um, Timothy Dalton as James Bond. I would have loved more Timothy yeah. Dalton James Bond movies, mm, um, oh, wow. but that's not really the question, is it? <laughs> it's just, well, you like, could have. Yeah, I mean, you you, you, you take James Bond, I mean, yeah. so you add Jurassic Park three. So why not a new Timothy Dalton Bond? Yeah, I think I don't know. I because I have to be honest, um, I haven't enjoyed. I'm, I was a huge James Bond fan, but I haven't enjoyed anything since two thousand and two. So um, yeah, I like, I like so, a Daniel Craig. I like him. I, well, not that's great. I respect that as well. Um, it just so happens you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I just I don't, I don't like because um, I used to want to be him, and I'd be mm, now mortified mm. if my kids wanted to be this James Bond. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, but that's uh, that's um. Uh, anyway, that's another conversation for another time. Um, mm. I don't know. There are so many um iconic characters everywhere. But um, the further adventures of Chief Brody from Jaws. That's what mm. I'd like to. I'd That'd like good. you know him doing you know like not the maritime stuff, but doing like inner city drug busts. Oh, <laughs> nice. I love that stuff. He just got like paid off from from the fishing business. And was like just just <laughs> yeah. go and, you know like just you know like we could we could have a series like Amity Nights, you know, and he's like <laughs> oh, he's driving yeah, around definitely. in a sports car, just rad, like nailing everyone and locking people up. <laughs> I reckon it's so good. So I thought he was amazing in that movie. Yeah. You know, um, actually, I, I did say recently on Twitter that I was a big fan of Chief Bro and someone sent me a picture of their five-year-old son who loves Jaws mm. going to a fancy dress party as Brody in Jaws. No <laughs> yeah, so with like, the, the, like a lovely tan jacket with the Amity police on the on Amazing. The, on the it's, it's, absolutely ama- amazing. What do, you, what do you think about that then? Uh, Connery is the best Bond. Oh, it's very hard to argue with Connery. Very hard. Uh, uh, mm. Con- exactly. Connery was just being Connery. He's na- naturally mm. magnetic. Um, oh yeah, I can't really argue with that at all. Um, I, I, I think one of his best films for me was The Rock. I think I loved him just, in that. Cool, yeah. Um, and he leaned into that beautifully mm, as well. I did. mean, that, yeah, it's very hard to to find fault with that. Mm. It really is, yeah. Even Nick Cage, uh, you know, is a big big fan base for Nick Cage on the chat here. Um, he was in that film, played that fantastically well as well. <laughs> He did. Um, to be honest, I'm a massive Cage fan, and mm. I'm more of a Cage fan, I think, of his stories behind the scenes, like mm. when he's just losing his mind and biting Mongolian T Rex skulls off the black market and stuff Rob, like that. Rob, <laughs> you are literally going to break our audience right now if you keep talking about him in this way. Really? Have oh, I they, found uh, my uh, people? Have I found my people? Oh, you have. You found you your have. people. Honestly, because I was about to say uh, another character I really love is Castor Troy um, mm. in Face Off, Cage's yeah. character. Yeah, so no. th- there we go. Look at all this cage. Yes. <laughs> I love it. And I love it. You know, like when he showed up and did Bath Christmas Lights. Mm. These, this guy is just amazing, isn't he? He is. And he I'd is. watch him do anything. I'd, I'd watch him read Serial. The, the, yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, he basically did on Netflix, yeah. right? He did the swear words <laughs> thing. And, and it yeah. didn't matter what he was talking about. It was like a history lesson. We're like, yeah, Nick Cage. Yeah. I, I, just so do it. <laughs> So one of the other staple questions that we've got, Rob, is you're on your deathbed, you're looking back at your writing career. It is a morbid question. Normally we do say that. (laughs) You're looking back on your writing career. What is success to you? What would you be happy with? Oh, um, it would always be um, being able to, literally, I I modified what success to me was very early on Mm. because I do think it's so hard to do something, you know, like, a lot of people like I go to a lot of schools and loads of the kids say, you know, like what car do you drive? What car, you know, like are you rich, sir? <laughs> that kind of stuff. And I have to be honest with them, like, no, 
No, you yeah. see that white van out there? That's me. Because <laughs> um, I was a, va- a white van man once and I got attached to it. I love having a van. <laughs> you know, with the kids, like, just chuck it in. It's fine. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I think success for me will always be based mm. on uh, whether I was able to look after my family through this. Mm. And if I can do, then that means I've made it in my mm. own eyes. Anything else is just a bonus. Anything else. Seriously, anything else is a bonus. So, and I'm definitely, you know... Um, in the state of mind where this could blow up at any minute and it could yeah. go away and I could be, you know, and I'd have no problem genuinely mm-hmm. um, going back to anything I used to, you know, any of the jobs I used to have or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had a great five year run here. Is it five? Mm-hmm. Four? Five, <laughs> four? Um, but um, I, and it's, it's massively stressful. I'll become, mm-hmm. I'm so honest. I, I, I think on average it's four hours sleep a night, five hours sleep a night, something like this. And it has been mm-hmm. like that for, yeah, since then, because you you do wonder where it's coming in. So I ghost wrote for ages, um, mm. and I've only I've only just eased off the ghost writing for a little bit. Um, mm. So I mean that's a whole other industry where it's in, insanely interesting. Um, vans are great for moving bodies. Uh, I've never done it though, so very good. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve to sixteen, ambitious, but mm. I like it. Let's well, you know, that. this just shows the audience that we have, and um, it's fantastic. <laughs> I like it. I like you're it. Fit, you're fitting it well. Um, <laughs> So how talk to us about the school, uh, you visit in schools and, and talk yeah. to people. How does that work? Because that's very exciting. It's ace, yeah. Um, I Because, like I said, the, we had an ornithologist come in. Um, and <laughs> now, yeah, yeah. Um, and now it's like they get people from all sorts of industries in. Mm. And um, to be an author to go in, I mean, I, I had the impression definitely when I was younger that authors were not like the three of us or the, mm. you know all the lovely people in the chat they were mm. stuffy older people who lived in libraries i thought that's what authors <laughs> were they just had mega imagination so and i think that carries on you know i think mm. a lot of people still think that now so um when i go to the school because i'm a i'm a um a patron of uh, creative writing at a school in oldham and i'm a writer in residence at a high school in warrington um and I go to the the boat. They're both in umbrellas that I go to all the schools mm. in those umbrellas, um, mm. and it's amazing. So when things were um, normal and we weren't in COVID lockdown times, mm. um, I'd be in front of over a thousand kids a week. Um, wow. Yeah, it was ace. I'd do assemblies and all sorts of stuff, um, <laughs> and I just I, I just absolutely loved it. Um, but my favourite thing to do with them was to um, do a story workshop in under a minute with them. You know, um, okay. so I concocted this thing where we could come up with a, a story in under a minute. Should I do it with you guys? Yeah, oh. go for it. Right, <laughs> audience, audience, yes. Should we do this? All right, okay, all right. Um, uh, empty your heads out. I'll do it like I do with the kids. Empty your heads out. Imagine your heads <sighs> ajar. Twist the take, top of your head off. Pour everything well. out. Because the best way, the best way, seriously, like sometimes we're surrounded by stories all oh, the time, aren't right. we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love how you're going for it. This is brilliant. <laughs> we're surrounded by stories all the time. The little adverts with the little puppy coming down the stairs with the toilet roll. It's a story. Mm. Um, it might not be a long, fulfilling story, but it's a story. Uh, Bubble Witch Saga on your phones, your apps, a little story mm. in there. You know, it's about a witch, there are bubbles, blah, blah, whatever. But it's a story. <laughs> we're trained in stories all the time, so you innately know how this works. This is the spiel, the spiel I get them to get going. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That- More of the spiel. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we need to book you in every week when we get, you know, a bit tired of writing. No, I do, well, whenever I'm, I'm bored and I need characters, this is what I do to keep inventing characters. Because <laughs> I think all stories start from character. You can build character out of anywhere. Mm. So um, I'm going to use full names for the purpose of this because you both call Chris. So Chris Haggett, give me a name, top of your head, first name, any name. Jeff. Jeff, uh, Chris Hooley, give me a, a, an age, any na- any age. Just give me a number. 13. Jeff is 13. Uh, Chris Haggett, give me okay. a place. <laughs> oh, uh, Wales. Chris Haggett's 13 in Wales. Those in the audience, can I please have a role in life? A role in 13, life? It's quite restricted, but uh, uh, any kind of role in life. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a role. That's not a role. Um, <laughs> that's, that's just, I love you, <laughs> blue, <our wife>. Um <laughs> This might take a while for feedback. I don't know. Um, Will it take a while for Well, either way. You know. Can you skip a question or can you come back to that one? No. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll, hang on, hang on. Paper boy, paper boy. He's a paper boy. Oh. Wicked. Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, so what was his name again? <laughs> Jeff is a paper boy. <laughs> yeah, he's a boy. Wicked. Yep. So we've got a character straight away. You can always, you, you've got a picture. We've all got the three of us and everyone in the audience has got a picture of this person immediately in their heads now, right mm. now. So um, let's, uh, Chris Hooley, what's his darkest secret? Ooh. Ooh. He wants to kill his stepdad. This 
is rad. We've got a great story. And this took under a minute. I mean, can, I just, can I just pause a second? Um, Halo said that he's 13, he's a surgeon. It's <laughs> not going to work. He might be a brilliant, a, a brilliant boy genius. He's way ahead of his time. Um, I don't know. What so we know Jeff is thirteen. He's in Wales. He wants to kill his stepdad. Right, we, that's brilliant. It's I'm, quite, I'm it's quite realistic. Jeff. I think. Um, um, but I think like characters are about the big stuff and the small stuff. So Chris Agate, what is, what does he do? What's a bad habit of his that he does when oh, no, one... when no one's looking? I don't know. He. Um... <laughs> uh, <laughs> a 13 year old boy um yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. um he, he likes to throw stones at the next door neighbor's cat there you go oh, animals we'll go back to animals he's he developing a tormented soul here yeah I like yeah, it. yeah definitely so right we've built a character it's very, in very basic terms but we've built a character so um uh, the begin- think of your story. Every story has a beginning, middle, and end. Let's forget the middle for the time being because it's easier to make a middle when you've got a beginning and an end. So, uh, Chris Hooley, what happens at the start of our story? How does the story open? Where are we? He's above his stepdad, and the body is beneath him. Oh, he's already right. done the deed. I like. I like. Ooh. I like a oh, skip ahead. I like it. You can tell you're dealing with writers here, not just the you know, not just the kids in school flipping it. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Agat, how does the how does the story end? Oh, the story ends clearly. Um, obviously, it ends just as it unfolds to back to where you started, right? So it, it's the whole reverse cyclical. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, and oh. and you realise that something's just happened, and you're like, no way, and then you see it on the floor. You're like, that's how it started. Mm. There we go. There we go. This is it. And the middle is essentially stitching the two together. It's very yeah, easy. So, so we sewn cats at uh, uh, cats at his dad. I don't know. <laughs> 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 we know what it's about. We know who's in it. What yeah. are we going to call it? Someone someone give us a title. Oh, um, yeah. Someone give us a title in the chat. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And that's usually the point when I say to the kids, they're now mm. go and write it. You know, and then like. And they go, ah, oh, fuck that. Uh, no, 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 no. Brilliant ones, like honestly, my favourite one ever of these, I think, was um, it, it, the title was John Cena of Mars, and it was <laughs> it, like the wrestler, yeah. And it was about he wanted to um, be the champion for having the biggest poo on Mars of all time, wow. and it was just honestly, it was one of the well, greatest. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> surely he'd be the first one anyway, so... Well, no, I, apparently in the story, Miles was colonised. Um, oh, okay. And mm. uh, John Cena had decided to go there to exercise or, or flex his, I don't know, his... <laughs> flex his muscles. <laughs> yes! <laughs> flex his toilet abilities, I would imagine. Definitely. I don't know. But, okay. Um, so, yeah, well, you can see, like, if you break down... Because what, what I've noticed in, in schools is that... Um, the actual love of storytelling is gone. Like they don't mm. focus on that at all. So when I say to the kids, like, um, what, uh, what's in a story? So many even put their hands up and say, um, fronted adverbials, or you know, I, I've got not mm. got a clue what that is. No idea. Uh, mm. You know, um, I think I've written eleven books now, and I don't know what that is. You know, so it's not like when you sit down and write, and none of us do this, where we sit down and go like, mm. right, I'm going to write a great set. Where's the fronted adverbial? You know, it just doesn't <laughs> happen at all. So yeah. it's about bringing back the love of just creating mm. and having fun with it. And if you're having fun, mm. you're enjoying it and your writing shines because you're enjoying it. Mm. So uh, what would be the advice to like, if you had to go back, so we've got 13 year old Greg, but we've now we're going back to 13 year old Rob. What yeah. would the advice be that you would give to him if you could give it to him? Keep smiling. Don't sweat the small stuff. Keep smiling. Um, mm-hmm. You can get caught up in all sorts of stuff at, at, in your teenage years. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I've always been, um, I always class myself as very, very lucky with the support I have around me. Mm. So I just said, keep smiling. So, and uh, uh, Chris, it was it was Jeff, not George or Greg, whatever you <laughs> I'm said. I'm getting names wrong all, uh, all, all over the place. <laughs> oh, I think we've got a name for the book, mm. uh, Pop Goes the Stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Honestly, we've got Amazing. The now, but the thing is, like, if I if I said, right, if this was a writing thing and I said, right, mm. everyone go away and write Pop Goes the Stepdad, <laughs> mm. you'd all have a blast writing that. I know. You know it doesn't matter what it be. You could write it to novel length if you wanted to. And yeah, stories exactly. are that easy to come up with if you mm-hmm. don't sweat the small stuff. You know but what do, I mean? Do you know what? Pop Goes the Stepdad is a really sinister name for a book. It's a wicked <laughs> name. That. It, it, is. Is. it is. Because it gives you like the childish vibe, but you know it's dark. It, yeah. Mm. 
Any, I yeah. like it. So let's move on because um, we'll be here for like five hours otherwise. Right. What we're going to do <laughs> is we'll skip on the second part of the show. So, guys, if you have questions for Rob, please send them in now. And I'm sure you will have. And, you okay. know, this has been quite a... Rob's kind of our audience, right? So think outside the box if you want. Oh, yeah. It took anything. There's nothing I won't answer. <laughs> there you go. You've heard it. Uh, send them <laughs> in. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, rec- uh, we'll introduce the new writing community member. Rob, this is someone... We've recently changed to who whoever's latest followed us on Twitter. We'll give them a shout out. We'll send them a GIF, and um, that GIF can be chosen by you. So it can be any sort of themed GIF animation uh, on Twitter, and the audience will send that to them and follow them. So it gives them a bit of a boost, right? Cool. And let me just find them. So let me play the video first, and I'll find them. Uh, here we go. Ooh. So there it is, Circle of Death. Uh, there you go, fans. Um, so the person is Ran, not Run, like Rabbits, and her Twitter is at Rabbits underscore Ran. Uh, she's an independent author. My first book is Science Fiction, The Years Ran Like Rabbits, which is kind of a cool name for a book. Yeah. Uh, she has 3,637 followers, which is more than me, so maybe not follower. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so can we send her a, a GIF? What do you want to send her a GIF of? What's your... Um, I'm Choice. a huggy person, so a hug. okay, yeah, a a hug. hug, but not like Aww. a standard hug, like um, a hug, like an aggressive hug. Yeah, like <laughs> get in here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? We've had so many random answers. That's the most genuine answer I think we've had on this. Ah, cool. Yeah, we've had, we've had, had the most aggressively heartfelt th- uh, thug hug. You can <laughs> Send them <laughs> an aggressive thug. Uh, no, don't do that. <laughs> So a heartfelt thug. Uh, no, <laughs> a <laughs> heartfelt yeah, the, a really hug. Soft, good in here. You know, good like, hug. I love yeah. you. Yeah, you're not escaping this hug. So even if you're listening back to the show uh, in a week's time on on um, the podcast, don't worry about it. Just go to Twitter at rabbits underscore ran r a n and send them a hug and say welcome to the writing community chat show. Um, tag Robin if you need to. Tag us if you tag need to, in. or just say welcome <laughs> to the family. Whatever you want to put on there, uh, do that. Um, Joanne says I'm armed with a rabbit. How does that work? I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, Ross I said new family member three thousand. We changed it to just whoever followed us kind of lately. Um, I think so. I don't know. We'll see. We'll change that back up. I'm sure. So while they're doing that, that is the person. Nice, um, Rob. While they're doing that, is there an author that you could recommend that you really you're into at the moment? Oh, I'm into so many. Um so many authors but um if there's one i could shout out who has knocked my socks off in the last year because i think this person has um talent to burn Mm. um, is steve gold um he's Mm. um i I think um steve gone is his uh twitter handle um he's just had um always the dead is it always no say goodbye when i'm gone um out sorry Gave away the title of his next one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the right there. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, he, um, yeah, say goodbye when I'm gone. And oh, mm. Always the Dead, sorry, was the, the second book that he came out. Phew. Um, he um, is astonishing. Um, mm. He writes in a way that I can only dream of writing. Um, and he is hard bitten noir as well. Um, mm. Lyrical, brilliant. He's a poet as well. Um, I really think, yeah, there is an exclusive there. <laughs> uh, I really, yeah, I think um, if this guy um, keeps doing what he's doing, he is going to be an absolute icon. I think. Mm. So yeah. Okay, uh, there's one question that's come in. So send some more in, please. There's only one. You're, you're too busy chatting to each other. Um, okay, <laughs> I've got a couple of randoms. While they're sending these questions in, we've got a couple of random ones, and we may as well ask them because it's it's kind of fun. And I think you Perfect. might like... I think you're in this era. So we'll start with the Star Wars classic. Uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Oh, Wars. Okay, straight in there. Fair never watched Star Trek. Definitely. But, yeah, uh, why would you? <laughs> it just never happened. Um, I'd love to have had a go. I really liked yeah. um, the Chris Pine, the first of the Chris Pine ones. But yeah. um, I do like um, uh, shouting Khan. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. But nice. no, I totally passed me by because um, I was a Return of the Jedi guy. I, honestly, Return of the Jedi when I was eight, seven or eight was just. Mm. 
That's the one. Chris, go and ask, ask the second Star Wars question. Go on. Darth Maul or Kylo Ren? Maul. Yes. Maul. Go on, Rob. Yeah, Maul. <laughs> because, um, he, yeah, he's rad, Maul, isn't he? Yeah, he's so yeah, much he's... better than Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren's a big baby. Yeah. <laughs> no, honestly, he right. He, Darth Maul just puts makeup on and dies. It's like, what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a double know, lightsaber. We are. These are all these questions. I mean, <laughs> he's wrong. I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. I just We're don't not wrong. see it. We, we have to side with the guest today. Yeah, but I what, I, what I think Robert is, said right, Maul. your authors, your authors, <laughs> and it's about complex characters, right? Mm, not not always. Character. Sometimes you need a character no, that's just badass. Yeah. He's got a double just, lightsaber. I don't know. I think uh, I didn't. Uh, I don't. I think. No, I, I still, I, I'm not going to change my mind. Good, I'm, I'm glad I'm, you don't. I'm just giving the the sort of like, this, there's pros and cons on both sides, but at the end of the day, the dude's got red face paint on. He fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. Um, okay, um, let's move on. If, if you like the battles, let's go for more, shall we? Um, pineapple and pizza, yes or no? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. That's one in my coat. Um. I can't remember anymore uh, for that kind of thing. Uh, this is not a battle, but like uh, Beatles or Elvis? Oh, I liked, uh, I was a huge Oasis fan, so it would have to be Beatles by proxy. Okay. But um, Elvis was an absolute icon. Mm. So uh, like, you know, like um, in terms of a, a, a physical presence, Elvis mm. is unreal. Um, Did you ever go and see Oasis, Rob? Yeah, I like, did. Yeah, I was um, mm. 97 at the GMAX when Be Here mm. Now dropped. I was on the front row when I was 14. Wow. And, um, yeah, I've still got the T-shirt upstairs. and um, it, Still fit? I can... No, no, no. <laughs> 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 Although it did before lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> and, and possibly one or two of these shirts. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was... Uh, I know it's so funny because that night I can still smell the bo of the person next to me from wow that yeah just like he had wow. a rich vibe going on that night this guy um, <laughs> oh my goodness yeah i can't think of that wonky you know the set was like a, a melted dali clock wasn't it or like a clock on one side <laughs> and like a phone booth over to one side and i can't look yeah. at those things without thinking of that guy's uh <laughs> underarm oh, area <laughs> brilliant there you go oh, things man. you learn when you're young uh, yeah, 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 the yeah. First I remember going to an Oasis concert and I was like 13, 14. And they went, if anybody falls down, pick them up. And then it just went, boof, boof. And just everyone was just rocking. It was insane. It was, yeah. It? Oh, it was yeah. great, wasn't it? I mean, um, yeah. Mm. Let's right, look, look at the questions that's come in from the audience then. Uh, Jody mm. Cook, uh, I love your one minute story idea, but can you come up with a story idea in just 15 seconds? Oof. Yeah. Um... Oh, should we time you? Well, it would yeah, start. I'll, I'll watch the clock. <laughs> Ready? Three, two, Holy one. Holy heck. Go. His mind's working very hard right now. Da, 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 da. Give me five extra seconds for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a hard question, Jody. No, it's all right. We've got Neil, who is a barley farmer. Um, and he's had a spectacularly bad year, so he starts offing people uh, to make up, uh, yeah, the odds and ends um, for his, you know, like where his, um, the accounts don't balance. Mm. So he starts offing people for the local um, p uh, village, you know, drug dealer people who need people being killed, obviously, because that's what happens in villages. What, so he becomes <laughs> a, hitman, a local hitman? Yeah, he's, he's like, becomes a local hitman, but the only thing he has is a rusty scythe from his barn. Oh, a brutal death as well. Yeah. Nice. Great idea. Uh, yeah. Well, there you go. Yes, he, yes, he can. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what we call it? Um, yeah. Just a brilliant gifts of of things from Halo: um, fire, nice. swords, goats for sacrificing, sword <laughs> and fire again. Very uniform as well. Um, yeah. Look. So, Rob, I'm going to go back to Blackstoke, yeah. and I'm going to get <laughs> Peter's name right this time because I called him Bob. Right. Right. I'm so sorry about that. No, it was because I, I, I named his I named his boss Paul because it was robbing Peter to pay Paul. It's probably the most um, <laughs> that you know make uh, sense in my mind now. No, don't I know I know no because I do the, <laughs> don't don't be daft man. I do the same all the time. I don't even yeah. know who half my characters are to be honest. So well, don't. I'm sorry about that, but how did you come up with Peter? Like, how did he come to the forefront of your mind? Uh, I wanted it. I wanted. I like flawed characters. 
I like mm. characters that are um, that it's hard to root for, um, and you have to be almost persuaded to root for. And he's got loads of flaws, um, mm. like his attitudes to, you know, whether he wants to or not. You know, like um, like in terms of prejudice, really. I mean, we have. Mm. Um, I think we've all probably, and I'm I'm only get speculating here, but we've all been in situations where we've been with people mm. who we hold in high regard, mm. but they let slip a prejudice. You know, yeah. that they hold yeah. and it rocks you a little bit, doesn't it? Mm. And you are forced to reevaluate slightly. Mm. Um, and I like asking tough questions of audiences like that. I like yeah. making the audience go, can I root for this person? You know, yeah. that's something I really, really, really like to do because it makes me keep wanting to go back when yeah. I, you know, again, like, because I always go from it from a, um, a reader's perspective because if I'm, Engaged as a reader, that's something that I want to take forward and learn from. Um, mm. So, yeah, complicated characters have always been a big thing that I really enjoy. Really, yeah. Cool. And if if we go back to the Stephen King link, obviously between your Blackstoke and Stephen King, you could talk like... about me and him in the same. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. Right. We'll do that. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's probably the only, the only time that ever happens. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. So obviously, Rob Parker, Stephen King, they're in the same ballpark here. Um, Sorry, Mom, did you hear that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> um, but obviously, he explores really difficult topics at times, and mm. like I'm thinking, it in particular with some of the yeah. scenes in that. Um, so, how do you tackle really difficult topics as a writer? Because you have tried, you have to definitely tackled them in. Blackstoke as well, with certain characters. Obviously, I don't want to go into it too much, but you have yeah. tackled that element. I found this a big challenge, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and it was... Um, there are some topics that I, I won't go near yet because I don't yeah. think I'm qualified enough to talk about them or to yeah. try and talk about them. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm growing. Um, and, you know, I've... I've I'm definitely the kind of person who tries to live as varied a life as possible. So, you know, if someone gets in touch with me and says, Rob, would you like to do this? Or we're going to do this. Are you in? I'll Mm. say yes, because even if I don't want to do it. (laughs) That's how you ended up on the show. No, no, no. This is not how I I tell you guys to be here in the first place. Rob, we need need a V advert. Will you do it? Yeah, yeah, let's do (laughs) it. (laughs) I'll always always learn something from that. You know, and I'll always have something to say or talk about Mm. afterwards especially write about, you know, mm. being in a position that um, was challenging to me or that I, I was against. So I'll always do that. And um, mm. yeah, in this scenario, yeah, I like to, I've started getting this part of me here, which likes to challenge myself a bit more and more every time. I used mm. to play quite safe and it took the, um, uh, the publisher <laughs> of the Ben Bracken series, three books to mm. get me to write a sex scene for Ben Bracken. <laughs> <laughs> because I just didn't want anyone to think that was my mm. take on sex or thought process. Or anything. <laughs> this is anyone. how Rob does sex. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, written down on the page. Any of that. So I wrote the most <laughs> farcical sex scene for that book, mm. and um, it was kicked out. No, it was not allowed. <laughs> well, Rob, Rob, what this what this means to me is what you're talking about, saying yes to things and experience it and using it to reflect in writing, is that you should definitely do a documentary of, you know, when these people go travelling and write about their experiences Man, in all these would, crazy I, honestly, places. Because because I can't say I, I can't say no or I'd like to. There have mm. been some scrapes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um I well, give us would... a good story, come on. Um, my favourite story ever is because I think um, my my dad is cut from the same cloth as I am. Okay. So, um, sorry, I'm cut from the same cloth as my <laughs> <Yeah>. dad. <laughs> All the way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> way too black stoke. Um, so, um, yeah, I, and I was with him. Um, he had a work thing once um, in Puerto Rico, and I wanted to. I said, Dad, I'd love to go there. You know. So as a family, we went with him, and. Mm. Um, we had a nice day out, you know, and on the way home, um, we said, um, let's go for a pint somewhere, you know, and we found <laughs> a place that was, um, we said to the, the taxi driver, can we have a beer somewhere? And he said, yeah, yeah, of course we can, you know, like, um, and we said, what about that? And we saw the place that was buried, like, it was like a shack dug into a mountain. Mm. And he said, we don't go there. We don't go there. <laughs> yeah, we can. Come yeah, on, let's yeah. go in there. 
And so um, he said, no, no, I, I can't go in. I can't go in. So this bloke, Angel, his name was, the taxi driver, said, um, you go in, I wait out, out here. Turns out that the, um, the prison was down the road. And um, when people first get out, it's where they end up. That's where they go. Um, wow. So we walked in there. There was all bikes parked outside. There were chickens running around in the yard, scratching all over the place. The floor of the bar was covered in chickens. It was just a dirt floor. And we wow. walked in, me and dad and my brother, and the, um, everyone in the bar, it was a Wild West like, mm. you know. <laughs> and they were festooned with tats and all mm. sorts and, you know, all over, you know, like there. And it was just one of those moments like, right, it's sink or swim time, Jen. <laughs> and my, my dad held his arms out and went, Buenos tardes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And suddenly we were in there and we were having beers with all these. Wow. That is, do you know what? <laughs> that's the best thing you could do, right? Because you could just be I'm like, honestly, oh, like, dear God. Like, honestly, I was like, Dad, are you channeling Roger Moore here? <laughs> 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 and he just, honestly, it was, it was one of the best moments. And we left that place after an hour. The taxi driver still refused to come in. And we left that place after an hour and I'd made loads of friends. And I'm sure if dad really wanted to, because he was giving life advice to some guy at the bar. No right? way. I, I'm sure if dad wanted to hit on someone in Puerto Rico, we could arrange it. No problem. Is, is <laughs> that is that reflected in your books anyway? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Definitely. Mm. Um, because I think, well, certainly lessons learned from that. And I'm definitely yeah. someone who, if you, if you conduct yourself in a nice way, in a kind way, mm. um, opportunities are, 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 it's not because I want opportunities to happen, but I th also think it's the right way to treat people. Definitely, mm. but doors open when you are polite with people and nice to people, and um, and more varied, more fulfilling life experiences will come from that. Um, so yeah, definitely. And and I've got more. I mean, there's more to write about if you experience more. Of course, there, there is. is. Right. Let's let's finish off with a couple more questions, and then we'll do the quiz. Um, <laughs> because because I don't want to miss these questions out that people have asked so nicely. Uh, yeah, Rob's okay. going to go and watch Mighty Duck, so you need to think, hurry up. <laughs> I, I think um, Halo. We just kind of answered that one, so we'll move on from that one. Okay. Uh, Anya says, "Question: If you could carry any weapon without legal consequence in the event of an apocalypse, what would you choose?" Um, I got. I went on holiday um, to uh, Woolacombe in Devon, mm. which I absolutely love down there. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and in, a, in an era when health and safety must have been forgotten, you could buy wooden baseball bats for one ninety nine with a tennis ball on the end. <laughs> bargain, bargain. <laughs> like sellotape to the end that you could just go mm. down the beach with. Um, and it's still by my bed now. Um, so um, I... Wow. Yeah, just as a sort of... I've, obviously, I've never had to use it. But, so, <laughs> so you'd be Negan, basically. Must in a, in a pocket, and, yeah, I just... I've got, the bat. Just one bat. There's something about this bat that I'm really attached to now. And the fact that it only costs me one ninety i I'm really, really taken by it. Have so, you yeah. named it Have you named it Lucille? No, it's got no name <laughs> at this point. But it's been... You know, like, we've... Since, you know, um, meeting my wife, it's, we've lived in four different houses, and it's been with, been with us for every single one. So, so far, so good. So mm. don't don't fuck with the Willacombe bat is what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, I think truthfully, I think it would break on the first meaty strike. <laughs> but um, I'm willing to experiment. Okay, uh, Connor says, um, question: Choose one. Never read a book again, or never watch a film again. Oh, that's cruel. That's, that's a brutal question, Connor. That's so hard, Connor. Um, never watch a film again because I oh. think. No, I know it's. I know it's so tough, and that's a that's a really oh, it's really awful. But books, and that doesn't mean I've I've decided that books are better than film. But mm. I think if I can't have one, there's a you know there's ninety minutes to one hundred and twenty minutes of a film, mm. and there are thousands of words in books. Yeah, mm. and the overall experience and learning that you get from books, even if it's the same book that you've read a number of times, you can still learn more from it. So I think. If I had to pick, it would be that. Chris, what would you do? Yeah, I'm with Rob on this one. I think the amount of books I've read and then I've watched the film and I've hated the film, I think <laughs> I, that makes me go, yeah, I'm sticking with the books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'd struggle with that one. I really would. Um, okay, one more. Um, Jody, which one famous person from history would you re resurrect from the dead for an hour? Oh, Ooh. Ooh. oh. Just an hour. Oh, just for an hour. That's so. Oh man, that's, that's not cool. even long enough for a set, is it? Like if it's no, a musician. I've mentioned him already, Roger Moore. Okay. I think oh, he'd yeah, be a great choice. What would he do? He's still. Um, I'd just chill out with him. Um, play <laughs> cigars and just tell me you about. Put you back for an hour. 
don't do anything. Just chill. <laughs> just, <laughs> just so we've, got, we've got yeah. like we've got one of them little thermidors of cigars. Just here. So yeah, just cigar, you some need, whiskey, and just talk to me, man. Just talk. To I get me. that does remind me of a question that we asked uh, Katrina Ward. I'm mm-hmm. going to say Katrina. I fuck, I fuck that up. Definitely, it's not Katrina. Katriona. Katriona. There we go. Katriona Ward. Because you messed it right up for the first time in the world. <laughs> yeah, uh, <I> you <laughs> did get it right there. Uh, not you that side. Katrina on the intro. And now you've got it right. <laughs> Did you I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson. That's yeah, what you saying. did. Yeah. I didn't, but I've just learned it now. So, uh, Catriona Ward, we asked her a question, and the question was, if you could resurrect one author to write a novel with, but then the condition of you writing a novel with them was that you had to kill them, which author would that be? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of question is this? It's a very <laughs> morbid I one. I kill them after I've written a novel with them? Yeah, yeah. Take the credit, I guess. I so it can be what? any it, author through history who's died. Oh, so that you can, I can like, right? So we wrote this, and then I can craftily say, "This is the new Rob Parker." Sorry, that guy's dead. We had yeah. to be right. Michael Crichton. <laughs> Brilliant. And how would you kill him? Um, he liked to. Uh, he wrote a few times about microbes and stuff. Um, so Ooh. I would probably go. No, I can't say I'd go with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wow, that, that is right on your toes, you know, on your know. toes, Rob. That's all I'm saying. Is wow. <laughs> um, but he did. He loved his books about you know like um, mm. pandemics and mm. epidemics. Yeah. Uh, uh, Anders says uh, I thought she was called pronounced uh, Katrina. No, she had an O in there, and it's a weird thing. And I said Katrina, and I was like, oh shit, you on did. the intro, and she which is brilliant. Yeah. And she Chilla. did. So it was, yeah. Uh, Annie so. says stab him with a dinosaur bone. Um, yeah, that would work too. That would work. Yeah, Grizzly, I love the slow burn of COVID. I know, I was going to say, probably quicker than COVID. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's just taking a turn. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get the quiz done because I want to see if if we have some sparky minds in the tip. We definitely have. This is about death. And I mean, uh, someone's going to get correct answers on this. So yeah, we're doing the quiz. That was quiz. a loose link <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of loose links to death tonight, I can tell you. So, we're doing a quiz, and it's true crime, which apparently is not actually the podcast uh, that Rob does. It's, <laughs> no, it's really not. Crime-based authors, of course, yes. um, but not true crime, right? Just facts okay. for you guys. Facts for you guys. <laughs> so, we have a quiz about true crime. and I audience, love of course... Brothers. I have to admit that the show is really... <laughs> Chris is clearly ne- well. Chris is clearly never. I have, I have, and but I just do you know what the artwork is amazing. It always just gives me true crime vibe, and I'm like true crime. Um, no, the merch is great, and the oh, show is brilliant as well. And you've got some brilliant guests on there, like you had Linwood Bass. Yeah, that's down to Chris McDonald. Uh, Chris McDonald, oh, is, amazing. He is a behind the scenes hustler. We had Chris on the show. Yeah, yeah. I know. I watched. He was. He, he was our first. That vibe, didn't he? That he yeah, is like first a proper triple, hustler. Definitely. Triple Chris show was uh, Chris McDonald. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> the three Chris. Honestly, mm. such a gent. He's a brilliant so, guy and a great writer. Yeah. So what happens? Damn is him. We have <laughs> ten questions. Uh, we will start from um, the guests, of course, and then we'll move to Chris. If you answer the question right, you get a point. If you pass mm. it, and the opposite person gets the point, uh, get, gets it right, they get two points. Ooh. So. You can answer or guess it. It's multiple choice, so you may as well guess. But, okay, starting with Rob, are you ready? Yeah. Which serial killer enjoyed dressing up as a clown and working charity events? Was that John Wayne Gacy, Ian Brady, or Dennis Radia? Radia? Radia. It was Gacy. It was, and he went by the name of Pogo the Clown. (laughs) Wow. Brilliant. Pogo. Hey, you freaky bastard. Uh, there you go. That's the point, <laughs> point to Rob. Uh, Chris, you ready? Yep. The St. Valentine's Day Massacre is associated with which famous criminal? Al Capone, John Dillinger, or George Moran? I'm going to say Al Capone. There was a very inappropriate place comma in there, and it really freaked me out when I was reading it. Um it is, it is, what do you say, Capone? Yeah. Yeah, it is indeed. He apparently killed eight people that day. Mm. Have you seen the new Capone, like the film with Tom Hardy? Yeah, I, I reviewed that film, Chris, and it was basically, <laughs> yes, it was basically um, someone with incontinence uh, trying to re- relive his life that he lost years and years ago. It was it was horrendous. 
Was it no good? I thought it was pretty good, man. Really? Yeah, like it was a different. It was a different take on it. Tom like Hardy walked around as an old man and shit his pants a lot. <laughs> I was like, what What am I watching? What am I wasting my All life on? All I need on? to know. That's literally no, it. come on. You've got to appreciate the acting in that film. Jesus. I love Tom, Tom Hardy. Hardy's not an old man who shits his pants. That's why it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, literally, he literally did. I'm not joking. It was... It was. I, I was so disappointed. Anyway, um, let's move on. Uh, um, back to Rob. Which man was the most prolific known serial killer in United States history? Mm. Was it... Paul Knowles, Jeffrey Dahmer, or Gary Ridgway? Part of me thinks it's the underrated... Uh, you know, sorry, what an awful expression. Underrated. <laughs> underrated spirit <laughs> oh. Gary Ridgway. He, underrated. He was, indeed. Uh, yeah. He was. And he was known as the Green That's River the Killer. One, yeah. And, net, and netted. Netted. <laughs> <laughs> he netted at least 49 victims. <laughs> wow. Like, hang on there yeah. you go I've oh, got him I've got him so what? brilliant well done that's 2-1 to uh, Rob the top goal scorer right there <laughs> netted it okay Chris <laughs> in Chicago criminal H.H. H. Holmes had a horse in Chicago <laughs> house is, uh, house <laughs> <laughs> he had a horse but that was a completely different story <laughs> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> in Chicago. <laughs> Equine serial killer. Hey, hey. <laughs> He's also jockey in his spare time. Uh, yeah, that, right, okay. He, he had a house in Chicago that eventually bore which nickname? <laughs> Not the horse. Um, the dungeon, murder castle, or uh, Fordville. Oh my goodness! It could be any of these, can it? Yeah. Um, murder castle. Let's go over the obvious. Are you sure now? You want to go with that one? Mm, yeah. Good answer. It's correct. Um, he he may have been responsible for hundreds of murders. It says, and may have been could have just made that up. So I don't know. He definitely didn't have a horse. <laughs> so uh, okay. <laughs> Back to Rob. Which serial killer claimed that a demonic dog commanded him to commit murder? Ooh. Now you can kick the dog. I mean, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Dennis Rader, um, David Berkowitz, Berkowitz uh, and Bobby Joe Long. I think it was um, the son of Sam, David Berkowitz. You are again correct. He was known <laughs> as the son of Sam and he killed mm. six people. Uh, flying with this. I'm worrying about myself a bit here. <laughs> Let's have a look on the chat very briefly. Um, red rum. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't him. Murder Castle. Yeah, we're getting some great answers on here. Mm. Did they know murder on this chat? I'm worried. Uh, okay, <laughs> the next someone writes a book how how we killed podcast hosts. So we're like, oh, get them off. Yeah. Okay, back to Chris. <laughs> how did the angel of death kill most of his elderly uh, patients? He drugged them, he smothered them, or he drained them of blood. Drugged them. Straight in there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, he did indeed <laughs> drug them. He was a nurse, <laughs> and he claimed that he, he was uh, relieving patients of suffering. Chris, you knew that very, very well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell us anything? or? No, of course you drugged them. No. I mean, yeah. What do you mean, of course they drugged them? Well, the other two were... Uh, Really shy option, so <laughs> you wouldn't bother killing them that way. I mean, why would you? Okay, Definitely not. back to Rob. Okay, couple left. Back to Rob. William Hurines uh, became famous for leaving messages written in what lipstick, blood, or feces? <laughs> I've no idea, but um, they're all awful. Yeah, they're all bad. Um, mm. Toilet humour is is something that my kids and father know me for. <laughs> um, I'm going to say feces on the back of that. I've got Chris, no idea. What do you mean they're all awful? How is lipstick worse than feces? It the lipstick's creepy. Yeah, is it really? It is. Yeah, yeah it's quite creepy. Well, you'd be right to say that because it was lipstick, and oh! one, of the, one of the messages actually told the cops to catch him oh, before wow. he killed again. Mm. So yeah, that would have been creepy. Mm. So uh, yeah, you yeah, miss a point out on that one, and that means Chris can take the lead uh, oh. with just a couple of questions left. Whew. 
Uh, what question? All good choices. Lipstick is least offensive, according to Anya. Yes. Um, smothered. That could just be a conversation for Halo. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, serial killer Ted Bundy once worked at which organization? Did he work at a funeral home, a suicide prevention hotline, or a heart hospital? I feel like I should know this. Mm. <laughs> no pressure. It's not obvious. Um, you got a chance to win this this week, Chris. You, you I know. To... That's why it's put added pressure on me. <laughs> um, I'm good. Someone's got it right on the chat. Oh, I'm going to say Heart Hospital because I'm just going to... Suicide oh. prevention. Oh, I was going to say that as well. <laughs> he was a master manipulator. Wow. So imagine that. Imagine that phoning up. I've got yeah. really bad thoughts. Ted mm. Bundy. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, did they add to his net netted? Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. Did he net mm. them? I don't know. Um, I'm sure he did. <laughs> <laughs> Is this where net galley came I'm having from? bad thoughts. Yeah. yeah, that's totally fine. Do it. Yeah. yeah. What, he, what, he rang up the, the sport of sport court of arbitration and like, <laughs> just count. <laughs> Does oh, this my count goodness. to my total? So, <laughs> because it should. Uh... <laughs> I spent three years working we at are... this hotline. <laughs> <laughs> top, I'm, top, I'm employee of the month. I want it, right? Yeah. Jump. <laughs> um, right, we've got two questions left, and it's all even. We've never. Oh, we might, guys. You might have to send in a, a tiebreaker question, okay? Just mm. in case. So, if someone wants to give us a tiebreaker, do not look at the chat, <laughs> Chris Hooley. Okay, back to Rob now. Um, mm. How many people have been named as Jack the Ripper suspects? Oh, Is it 100, 200, or 300 people? I mean, um, when I, in my head, initially I thought, well, there was a lot. I mean, mm. each of those answers mm. is a lot. <laughs> so, of course it is. I mean, the middle one, 200. I mean, I watched, um, I listened to a, a podcast called Last Podcast on the Left. Have you, have you ever heard that one? Mm-hmm. Um, is that an talked... actual true crime? Okay. Yes, it is. Um, and they, they talked about this and the actual uh, way that the police dealt with this at the time was just unbelievable. Really? It was so incredibly just ridiculous that they missed the suspect multiple times um, oh. and didn't even didn't even question them when they brought him in. It was incredible. Um, so you're saying 200? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Ah, uh, the answer is 100. Oh, uh, my goodness. Chris has the chance. Uh, none of the uh, speculation ever ended with the conviction. So they would just pull Ooh. people in left, right and centre. There was even um, a false person saying it was them. And they ch- chased the lead for like three years, thinking Good. it was this guy who then said it wasn't me. <laughs> Shaggy. <People> um, weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe that's where Shaggy came from. I don't know. Mm. Uh, anyway, so... You had the chance to win this on the last question. Go on, Chris. Go on. And it's about a granny killer. Uh, okay. <laughs> Why did you say that as if I was the next? <laughs> well, I don't know. But it's funny. You've killed loads of grannies. You'll get this right. <laughs> how, how did the giggling granny kill numerous members of her family? Did she poison them? Did she do it with a knife? Or did she do it with a car? Oh, it's got to be a poison, on it, with a nanny? It's got to be baking pies. Eat this pipe, family. You know, <laughs> my granny was famous for cheese and onion pies. She never poisoned us. I might have, but <laughs> oh, she did, but she really badly. It, that would definitely be the way that she would have done it easily. So I'm going to go with the poison. Do you know what? I'm I'm disappointingly saying this that um, Chrissy won this week's challenge. Oh, well, it is indeed poison. Well, she well. killed eleven <laughs> family members, including four husbands. What? Wow. I mean, she had insurance out, surely. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, well done, yeah. well done, um, yeah. Huli, expert in granny side. Uh, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Huli yeah, answered way true. too fast. Um, <laughs> we're all thinking it, and well done, man. Well oh, done. Man. Yeah, it's not. It's not a victory I'm proud of, to be honest. But it's your first. <laughs> it's your first win in a while, right? So well done. Well done to you. Well, I mean. Wow. Incredible. Uh, cool. I mean, Rob, um, all I can say is that I'm glad um, you nearly had him and you should have beaten him because... Yeah. I mean, just, obviously just... running a true crime podcast, Rob. You <laughs> <should> <laughs> <have> <laughs> a... 
<laughs> he should have won. And and the fact that Chris knew way too much about killing grannies. I don't know why. Um, you know what? I don't know whether it's a good thing when you don't know so much about some of the sickest people in history. So you know, it's like, I'm okay with the loss here. <laughs> anyway, um, all we can say is thank you so much for joining us. And oh, guys, I, I can't say how much. My, my, my cheeks literally hurt right now. And, <laughs> um, before we do go, let us know where people can find your books, all your all your previous books and what's coming up and where they can find Oh, and, no, wait a minute, Chris. I wanted to ask this before, but I didn't ask it. Rob Parker knocked Richard Osman off <gasps> of the top of the charts. No way. And we've not yeah, mentioned yeah. that. We've not mentioned it. The book that uh, never, like he was never, up there ever, ever moved. And you knocked him off. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, there's, I've got a screenshot um, of I'm one. <laughs> uh, Barack Obama is two. <laughs> wow. Richard Osman is three. And Matthew McConaughey is four. You're kidding me. Amazing. Oh, no, I, I mean, um, I, can, I can quit now. <laughs> <laughs> we can call it there. <laughs> Do you know what? Recently, um, wow. two two people that worked for Barack Obama's kind of thing followed the show. I was thinking, Ooh. shit. I was thinking, shit. <laughs> We've said right. something that we're fucking we're out of there. Um, <laughs> but that's amazing, honestly. That that, that is incredible. And no, that lucky, book, lucky, man. that book was not going anywhere for a long, long time. Um, yeah, and you've you got the enough. handle. You you took that man down. Uh, I mean, it lasted for two days. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll take it. Yeah, definitely. Um, just on the chat. Uh, oh yeah, let us know where, you, where we, people can pick up your work oh, yeah. and what, what, oh, what's coming out. Uh, what's coming out? Oh my god! Right. Okay. The Ben Bracken stuff. Uh, best place for you to get all that is um, from uh, you know your your local book retailers, Waterstones, Amazon. Um, all those guys have got it. Um, Blackstone. Best place you can get it is at uh, Red Dog Press's website because I'm signing all the things that come in. So if you want a signed one, I'll do them no trouble at all. Um, mm. Then uh, you've got so that's out. Uh, Let's do this. Blackstoke is out now. Yes. The Watchman <laughs> is out 24th of June. Um, and far and from Blackstoke the tree, was compared to Stephen King. And uh, The Watchman one... is Sex Idol. <laughs> <laughs> sexy icon. Ben yeah, sexy back. icon. Yeah. Um, and this, the print, um, uh, in print and hardback is the, um, the book that, yeah, did Richard Osman and Barack Obama. I will mm. never not enjoy having just said that <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> that, incredible from the tree um that is out on the 2nd of july in print and hard in hardback and uh, hard copy so thank you uh, and also um people are, uh, are loving the show great show rob rocks and but thank twitter you. handle people want to follow you what yeah is it? rob parker author rob parker yeah. author um yeah that's across that all that's facebook and instagram as well Hustle, Rob. Hustle. He's working. I can tell you. Hey, he, he's only am. got three books out this uh, this uh, <laughs> this year. Three books. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, um, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> um, Anya says we need Obama on the show. I will find Gil. I mean, I'll find Gil if Obama comes on the show. Um, yeah. He's right. I'll books. tell him he sucks and Rob Parker beat his ass. <laughs> <laughs> if I, I'll bet you a hundred quid that you don't say that if he ever came on the show. Um, <laughs> You would shit. Back. I would, you would do it just back. so I didn't lose a hundred quid. Now you would shit like. your pants. You would shit your pants. <laughs> anyway, um, Rob, thank you so so much for coming on the show, thank guys. You. Please follow Rob. Please check out his books and his series. Look fantastic. Uh, L V Matthews, Liv Matthews. Thank you so much for sponsoring the show. The prank she was on recently. Check her show out. Buy that book because support the authors and support the show. Um, we've had a blast. Uh, Chris, um, <laughs> it's, it's great to see you winning this the quiz. Uh, for, yeah, um, again, not proud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, great, guys, please look after yourselves and have a great weekend, but be safe. And yeah. uh, we will see you on Wednesday. We've got some unbelievable uh, guests coming up and shows uh, always twice a week. And check out Rob's um, podcast as well. <laughs> and you can find them on his website. So, guys, thank you so much. Chris is waving like the Queen. We're going to join yeah, in. In a Queen and wave. Indeed, she had a grandchild. Uh, tenth. Wow. <laughs> Brilliant. Great news. Thanks for that. Um, we'll see you soon, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>